Have you been caught up in all the rage about network automation? Are you asking yourself, how do I get started? Well, the Cisco DevNet Associate exam may be your answer to your questions. Hi, I'm Justin Dennison from IT Pro TV, and I'm bringing you this critical update about the Cisco DevNet Associate exam. And well, this is a brand new certification from the Cisco world, and it's actually going to follow up with specializations and professional ones, and I think expert ones if I'm not on the horizon, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But when you're encountering a new exam, something that's just been released, sometimes you get a little iffy, right? You get a little shaky. I'm short of breath. What's <laughs> going to go on? Um, so let's talk about the exam a little bit. So the exam covers some development practices as well as some networking practices and networking fundamentals. I'm pretty strong in development practices. Uh, my associate here, Ronnie, is pretty strong in networking. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how this is going to play out right. in the long term. But the exam is 102 questions. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's 85 minutes. No. Justin, the exam is actually 120 minutes. Yes, that's right. Yep. That's right. Uh, and uh, it is stacked with some interesting question types. And that's what I want to talk to you about because not knowing how an exam is formatted is a great way to freeze and do horribly on that <laughs> exam. So let's go ahead and take a look at my screen. We're going to talk about the Cisco DevNet Associate exam using some sample questions. So our first sample question is multiple choice. All right. We've all encountered these. And well, with this multiple choice question, I'm going to throw it over to Ronnie. Which HTTP verb represents a create operation? Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to say it is uh, B, post. Ah, uh, it is B. OK. Yeah, see, <laughs> Ron Ronnie was afraid he wasn't yeah. going to know any of these. But he is. And this is a single correct answer. Right. It's going to be a radio button. You have one, and that's it. Be very careful with the wording of these. Uh, there are some trickier ones where it's like, it's not a create operation, right? Right. And so inversions can play, can take a toll on you. Now, along with multiple choice, we can have multiple, multiple choice, right? I have a multi-select, so to speak. Now, the question is a little small here. Which of the following status codes represents client-side errors? Ooh. And I have a plethora Right. All right. I have uh, 401, 400, 500, 529, <laughs> 200, 201, 304, 302. These are the <laughs> HTTP status codes um, associated with HTTP responses. Ronnie, right. do you have, you, you got to pick uh, two. Which two are you going to pick? All right. So uh, at this point, I'd have to do a process of elimination, but I, I think it, it would be A and E if I'm reading the letters correct. Yeah. So I'm using letters. It's going okay. to be yep. check boxes. So Ronnie says 401, 400, but he did exactly what you should do, eliminate things. I know for a fact 200s are success, so those right. aren't errors. I know 300s are successful status codes. Yep. Those are gone, so it's down to 400 and 500. Right. Ronnie picked the right one. 500 are server-side errors, 400s <laughs> are client-side errors. Great job, Ronnie. I mean, you're well <laughs> on your way to getting your DevNet Associate certification. Uh, <laughs> Now, along with that, yeah. right, we start moving into some different question types. If we move over. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, this was my favorite. This is my favorite. Yeah, let's blow that up. This is my favorite because, yeah, there are oh, fill in the blanks my. just like this. Um, now, I've, yeah. I've done a few things. I made it a little simpler. There are more complicated ones. There are easier ones. I was kind of surprised that there were fill in the blanks. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that on a Cisco exam. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're asking you, what are you supposed to type here? All right. So d did you get like a list of words? Ah, some of the fill in the blanks actually okay. correspond with a follow up um, uh, question type we'll talk about okay. in a moment. Some of the fill in the blanks where you type, oh. there are no word okay. lists, nothing. <laughs> um, now, the code ones tend to be, they give you a word list right. or something to drag and drop. There are just, open free response ones. It was new to me, yeah. new to Ronnie. Uh, I've had other exams like this, but you should be aware. Now, I'm not gonna subject <laughs> Ronnie to this question because Ronnie is like sweating, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so what would happen is you would fill in the labels. So for instance, in this header, can we blow that back up? And headers content type, that's gonna be the content type variable that you type there, it has to be exact. And the token, it's gonna be the token variable. In the auth equals username comma, that's going to be the password variable. Headers equals headers, and then print, and that's going to be data, which is the variable above that. So right. what it's trying to test is can you reason about 
how this right. program fits together, right? You should be able to reason through these if you have some programming experience, but they can get a little more complicated sure. than this, so do take your time. Now, Ronnie asked a very important question. Do we get word banks with these? Eh, kind of, sometimes, okay. all right? Yep. If we move over, we'll get a oh. drag and drop, which can be associated with the fill in the blank, or it can be a categorization like this. Okay. Now, the drag and drops, you may have extra options. Right. You may have reused options. You can have categorizations like this, or it can be labeled fill in the blank where you have to categorize based on where they fit in the fill in the blank. So this drag and drop can get a little crazy, and the number of options can actually be pretty lengthy. You know, 10, 15 options. <laughs> you got to scroll a little bit. But Ronnie, all right. I think you actually might be able to do all right on this one. So I have right. two things that describe XML, two things that describe JSON. All right. Let's, let's see how you do. All right, XML would be tags and attributes and used in SOAP, JSON, key value pairs, and common in REST. Boom, nailed right. it. I tell you what, if it wasn't for that fill in the blank, Ronnie would have got oh. 100%, right? <laughs> but I knew that fill in the blank could be a little difficult. Uh, luckily, a lot of times they are bundled in conjunction with the drag and drop. Not all the time, though. So those are the main question types that you're going to encounter. Be very, very careful. There are some small little nuances right. that you'll go, oh, I know, that. wait a minute, hold on. Those multi-select can be tricky because you're <laughs> like, well, uh, they're all of them. Oh, that's what makes it different. Be very careful about wording. Uh, the fill in the blank, that's just experience. You're going to know it or you don't. Uh, that's, all, that's all I got for you. Uh, and if you're coming from a developer background, you, de you do need to snuff up on your uh, networking and Cisco platforms. If you're from the Cisco side, you definitely need to make sure you understand development. And speaking of the DevNet Associate, Ronnie and I just finished the DevNet right. Associate course and it's in our courses for itpro.tv. So you should definitely go check it out because the DevNet Associate certification is waiting for you. Check out the playlist to see more critical updates and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Justin Dennison and thanks for watching this critical update.